Hi everyone and welcome back to Morning Cup. I am so excited today because I have Christina with me. Christina is a personal stylist in the greater Boston, Massachusetts area. Her goal is to help women find their style, own it, and step into their power. She's on a mission to help empower women to see beyond the stereotypes placed on them, especially as we age. Christina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> well, you're doing great already. <laughs> Just smile. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for coming today. And I honestly, I truly admire just your mission. And that's what my mission is too, to empower women, but really just how we feel from the inside out. And I would love for you to really kind of dive into your journey of starting as a personal stylist. Where did that come from? How did you start? So people can really know a little bit more about you. Okay. So I was sort of born literally with fashion in my blood. My dad owned a men's, um, fashion boutique where he imported um, men's fashions from Italy. So that's how I really started in menswear. Um, I went to work with him from a very young age. I think I was like five where I have my first like picture of, of me like working with him in his store. Um, so it, that's how it sort of started. And I've always been involved in the family business. So um, once I got old enough, I really started diving deeper into the business side with him. He would take me on buying trips and um, we would go to New York and to Italy. And I loved that part of it because I got to experience, you know, fashion like up front, you know, in showrooms. And that was so cool. And I love that. And I love that he trusted me enough to, you know, have input in what his collections were going to look like for his store. So that was really exciting and really empowering for me, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then I sort of always have been in the fashion industry. I went to, um, when I was 15, I started working for Express and I started in the stock room there. And I, then I like worked my way to the sales floor. And then after that, I went to college and, but all the while still working for my dad, went to college, um, thinking I was going to be a lawyer, to be honest with you. I went into I went and thinking I wanted to be, you know, a, a courtroom attorney. And then I was like, no, this is not for me. Um, so I graduated with a major in communication and went to work right away um, in back in retail fashion because that was my wheelhouse and that's what I love to do. Um, I sort of layered in the makeup piece too, the beauty piece. So I've always been involved that way. And then finally I moved into this home probably 10 years ago now. Um, I had two small children and I had no clue what I was gonna do. Um, I, I loved being a stay-at-home mom, but I, there was something missing and I knew that I had something else to, you know, to give to the world. So I decided that I was going to um, sign on to be um, a direct to, uh, direct to consumer um, jewelry line. So I went and did a party and this woman um, bought like so much jewelry from me. And she said to me, you know what? Now that I have all this jewelry, I need you to come to my house and I need you to style me because I have no idea what to wear with all this jewelry. So my first instinct was no, because I, I had never done it before. I was like, what do I charge this woman? Who is this woman? Like, I don't even know this woman, you know? Yeah. So before I could say no, my brain just, it was like verbal vomit. And I was like, sure. And meanwhile, in my the back of my head, I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? Like, I don't know anything. So I went to her house and I showed up there and I was like, how do I even charge this woman? Like I, and I told her, I, I'm not going to charge you. And she's like, no, I want to give you this amount of money. So I need you to put all these looks together for me with this jewelry. So I did it. And then I got a call like a couple days later from her friend. And she said, oh, you know, she called me so-and-so and, you know, I want you to come and do the same thing for me. And so I started doing that and for like random, like friends of friends and then my friends. And then I was like, finally, you know what? This is a business, you know, I can't, you know, I can't deny this anymore. People need this and people want this. So two years ago, right before COVID, 
So t- two years, I don't even know how long it's been, two years, right? <laughs> yeah. Right before COVID, um, I put together a website and I was like, this is, you know, I need a landing pad. People are asking me what else I do, what other services I offer. So I put together a website on my own. My husband helped me um, and we launched it. And then COVID happened literally like two weeks later. Ooh. So I know, right? And so I was like, okay, well, this is, of course, then all the, you know, all the doubt and all the imposter syndrome and all the, all of that came rushing up. And I was like, this is people, people don't want this now. Like, this is so superficial. This is ridiculous. Like we're in a crisis, you know, nobody wants this, but I was like, you know what, if nothing else, fashion makes me feel so much better. And so I was like, you know what? people need something that's like light right now and something that's like not so heavy. And so I was like, you know what? I started really like hammering it on Instagram and I was just like showing up as my authentic self, my, you know, and like, you know, fashion and beauty and all the things that really made me feel better. And I was like, there's gotta be somebody out there who, who feels the same way I do, you know? And so I started just carrying on with that. And then like probably around February of the following year when, you know, everything went to zoom, Mm -hmm. um, people were contacting me and they were like, what do I wear on zoom? What looks good on camera? What colors, what makeup, what, you know? And so I started styling people that way virtually because nothing was open at the time. And then, and then things started to open up again. And, you know, I just kept on with Instagram and Instagram has been a tremendous platform for me. Um, just, you know, building that community brings me so much joy and I've gotten so many amazing clients from it. And so here I am. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. And Instagram has been such a huge tool for businesses all over the world and being able to connect like how we connected, but being able to really pivot during COVID, I think is huge, especially starting right before it happened. I'm sure all the doubt and imposter syndrome came in but you were able to shift that. And that's what an entrepreneur does. They shift when things aren't going the way they want or outside circumstances that we can't control, being able to make it work for you. And I love that you're all about fashion too, because it it does make us feel good. It makes us feel confident. But what are some of the things that maybe you notice like theme wise, where it's really helped your clients when you've worked with them, maybe on Zoom, because I know it's a little different now. (laughs) Yeah. in terms of what helped them feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, you know, it's funny because the majority of the people were like all dressed up from here to the waist (laughs) and then like wearing sweatpants, right? And so people would say to me, you know, it was like a lighthearted thing. It was like, hey, look what I have on underneath, you know? Um, So just, you know, brighter colors on top, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, more makeup than you normally, you know? That was Mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges, actually. They were like, you know, I was like, well, you need to wear a little more makeup than you normally used to wearing because the camera and, you know, people at first were like, I don't know, but they trusted me. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that, I think that even though you had, they had sweatpants on, Mm -hmm. on the bottom, just being, being you know, present up here in something other than sweatpants, you know, really made people feel good because, you know, then I would get calls like, I'm so done with sweatpants. I'm so done with up leisure. Like, I can't wait to even just wear like something that's not a sweatshirt, you know? And even if it was just like a colorful t-shirt that was like, you know, even just nicer than, you know, just your plain old white, you know, t-shirt. So... Mm -hmm. I love that. No, and I think two colors really brighten up our moods and other factors as well. And I'm curious, so when you were starting your business, when it did shift, like after you got your website up and running, what was that like getting clients? Like I know Instagram was a big um, platform for you, but what was that process like for you? <sighs> so Instagram was a big one. I also have a lot, a lot of my business is word of mouth, honestly. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, somebody would, and I have, I'm really fortunate to have a, a tremendous support system in my friends and my family. So, you know, they would, you know, they saw how hard I was working. And so it was just that one person who was, either sharing my website or sharing my name or, you know, somebody on Instagram who was sharing 
my business in their stories. I mean, even just so, so kind, like a random stranger, you know, that would see a post that resonated with them in some way. Um, and so, yeah, I just, Facebook, that's another one of my, you know, my bigger, but my bigger converters are really on Instagram. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just, it was the network. It was the network of people that I'm so fortunate to have. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, that's, that's really what it was. No, you're absolutely right. Like your network is your net worth. And I truly believe that, but it's also building that community because I've talked to a lot of business owners. And the one thing that I hear consistently is that word of mouth, being able to really just stand by your business, but the integrity and the character you are, the person you are, being able to facilitate that and people seeing the work you're doing like, oh, wait, oh, you got to go to Christina. Um, but being able to understand that too, I think is so important because it is really your community, how it maybe you can't get your business up and running like all over social media, but the more you impact people, the more you have that one-on-one -on -one conversation or they see something that resonates with them, that's how it's built, I believe. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> no, it totally is. It totally is. And I, you know, more than anything else, I mean, I love the community that I have on social media because I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel like I know them, even though mm -hmm. I don't. And they're, they're just like, you know, and some of them have stuck with me since the very, very beginning. And so that like warms my heart that, you know, something about my mission or about you know, my crazy or about whatever just resonates with them. And so that's really exciting to me, you know, to even if I can impact one person who's having a bad day and I'm like, you know, throw on this pink lipstick, you'll feel so much better. You know, even if it's that one person that makes me feel great. And that's where it starts, right? It starts with that one person that you can really impact and thinking of not impacting millions right away, but the one person that you impact, they impact other people. It's a ripple effect. Um, but yeah. I'm curious, what are some like style tips? I know you've mentioned a few already, just like bright colors, things like that, but maybe outside of Zoom, like when people are just going out and about, what are some style tips when, I guess just like everyday casual like moments where they're maybe not going to like a major meeting or anything like that, but they're just going out and about. What are some like style tips for casual? Oh, geez, there's so many, you know, I think that like, you, one of my very favorite looks is just a t shirt and jeans and a motorcycle jacket. That's like my favorite, all time favorite, like quintessential, if there was one look to describe me, it would be that, you know, I love the glam and I love all of that. But deep down inside, I just I love that. I think, a, you know, I think a stylish layer can add so much. Um, it doesn't even have to be a blazer. It can be this time of year. It can be a kimono. Um, it can be, you know, a fun cardigan. It can be a motorcycle jacket, a denim jacket, anything that can add style to even just the most basic look. Um, and so in your sneakers too, you know, your shoes, that's like, to me, the make or break, right? So if your shoes are, if you're, if you love sneakers, instead of like your old beat up, you know, gym sneakers, go out and get yourself like a cute one, you know? And if you love that comfort, you can be stylish and be comfortable at the same time. Um, so, you know, a scarf, that adds so much style, maybe not this time of year, but you know, a you know, a colorful scarf. And if you don't like color, maybe a print, you know, or even if it's just like an oversized something, something that adds style, um, even just to the most basic. So a good layer, a good shoe, jewelry, Huge. I mean, even if you're not into this big giant jewelry, you know, something like a small layered chain or just anything to elevate and th those little extra details make a huge difference. I, I believe that. I know I've like just in my personal style too, of like just adding certain little things, it makes yeah. such a difference. And also yes. how you feel too. <laughs> yes. That cute little headband you're wearing right now. Like that took you two seconds, right? Yes. Yeah. Super and it's adorable. <laughs> It's too cute, right? It, it mm -hmm. takes no time at all. People think like, oh my gosh, I have to spend all this time getting ready to look good. You really don't. Like you really don't. Accessories are like this. Look, I mean, this took me two seconds. Two seconds, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. <laughs> Um, when, so when it comes to just like even shopping for like our own style, because like, why would somebody hire a personal stylist? 
the long and short of it is mm-hmm. honestly. So the reason I do what I do is because I saw a need that it, it was glaringly obvious. So a lot of times when we shop, we don't know where to go, right? In terms of like, you know, how do I make my closet look cohesive? And how do I make my closet work for me? And so a lot of times we just go and we shop just for one-off pieces. And I know that that was happening a lot for me. I was just going out and because I love fashion so much, I was just, when I was shopping, I was just buying a lot of stylish pieces, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I was finding that I was wasting a lot of money on those really stylish pieces. And I didn't have the core basics to pair with those very stylish pieces. So I would get frustrated because I was, my closet was full of amazing clothes, but I didn't have the right pieces. So, you know, shopping with intention, um, you know, a stylist actually saves you money. If you can, if you can, you know, if you can afford to just, you know, front a little more upfront and, you know, invest in yourself a little more upfront, you will find that you will, you will actually save money because that stylist, if that stylist knows what they're doing, they're going to, they're going to make you, you know, shop with intention. And so when you do that, you actually save money um, in the long run, because when you are going to get dressed, you have those pieces that go with the other pieces in your closet. Or if you're starting over, you have a core wardrobe where, you know, a stylist can help you curate that wardrobe so that they, you know, so that you can walk into your closet and be excited to get dressed instead of saying, oh my God, I have nothing to wear when you really have a closet full of clothes. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, no, and I think that makes perfect sense. And too, like, so I'm curious, do you go with your clients or do they already have their wardrobe there and then you help them once it's already there? Like, how does that work? So I work with clients in a lot of different ways. I have clients who you know, love to shop and they will happily mm-hmm. come with me. I have clients who shopping gives them tremendous anxiety and they want nothing to do with it. So they, you know, trust me with their credit card and I go and I shop for them and then I take everything back to their house. They try it all on and it's like really a, you know, it's really a, a nice service because they don't have to leave their house. And um, so <laughs> I up with them that way. Um, so yeah, so we either... People hire me either to, you know, put together looks for what is already existing or, you know, maybe they need a whole new wardrobe because they've had a lifestyle change. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that I work with them. But yes, a lot of them, most of them come with me. I have, you know, maybe three that don't want anything to do with shopping. They love to look good. They just don't love to shop because it's overwhelming for people. It really is. I mean, it's like, what do you pick? What colors do you pick? How do you know what size? And then it's like, you know, trying on in the dressing room. And then there's a lot of people who don't want to spend time doing that. You know, they'd like, they'd rather be like dressing in their own home. So yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's so interesting because there are so many ways that people like don't know that there is available to them. And that's why I wanted to ask that as well, because I think when we look at it from different perspectives, they can go with you or they could just be like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And you're able to fine tune that and get those little details, get the accessories, get the clothes that yeah. are going to look good on them for their body type as well. Yeah. And I've been working with clients virtually. Um, you know, I actually, yeah, it, which has been great. I, I, it's really refreshing to work with somebody that's like in another part of, a, of the country, you know, where I can't. Yeah. And it's nice to be able to serve them and not, you know, if they want to work with me, you know, it's humbling for me. And I'm excited for them. So, you know, it's, it would be horrible for me to say, no, I don't want to work with you or no, I can't work with you because you live too far away. So it's nice that, you know, I've been able to do that virtually as well. So. Yes. And I'm sure your clients are really happy about that as well. And so when you do work with people through online on zoom, are you actually buying the clothes for them? Like, how does that work? Are they mostly just like putting it together from their house? What is it? No. So they are, so it depends. Um, so we, 
I follow the same protocol that I follow with my in-person clients. So in, rather than, you know, talking with them in person, we're doing it this way, right? So they're still showing me their closet. They're still, you know, we're still going through the whole, you know, what's your style? Tell me the colors you love. And all of those questions that I ask my, you know, in-person people. And then it, rather than shopping for them in person, I shop for them virtually. So I send them links. And then we reconvene many times over FaceTime or Zoom or whatever. And, and it would be just like we would do it in person, except for we're virtual. And it feels just as great, honestly. It does. Uh, I love that. I think it's so fascinating. It's just like, you know, you can have a personal stylist anywhere in the country, anywhere. in the world. Anywhere. You go global, right? You're global. Anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I've never done anyone globally, but I mean, sure. Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, I really believe that. And that goes for anything. You know, if you want it, if you want something there with the amount of resources and the amount of technology that's available to us today, there's really nothing you can't do. Nothing. You know, you can achieve the impossible. <laughs> it is crazy, right? It is crazy. And fashion has changed so much in the million years that I've been in the industry. I mean, this was like, you know, the online shopping space was like non-existent you know before like there was no you know you worked with a stylist and you had to have them in your home and that was it like there was no shopping online for somebody or you know there's no you can have anything at your fingertips at any moment at any time it's crazy yes no it absolutely is crazy <laughs> that's what's available to us yeah. i do have one more question though about tips so if you were to give like your top two or three tips when it comes to styling what are what would those be let's see oh you got me with this one um i would say wear pieces that spark joy that would be like my number one right i think it's so hard these days to um you know everyone's in such a box, you know, we're over 40. So we have to dress this way and we're a mom now. So we have to dress this way and, you know, we're professional. So we can't show a leg or we can't show this or we can't show that. And it's like, oh, there's so many rules. So <laughs> like, I go crazy with the rules. I don't like them. So and fashion is just fun. So my biggest tip would be wear what sparks joy. Um, if it doesn't spark joy, don't even go there, you know, um, and don't worry about what anyone else is going to say and, you know, let them do them and you do you, right? Yes. That way we're all happy. The second tip I would give you is um, make sure it fits well. Um, I, you know, that's hugely important. So, you know, you can wear pretty much whatever you want. Um, if it fits, then it it looks great, you know. Um, and And the third is I would choose... I would choose colors that look well on you. So, you know, that's hugely important too. If you're, you know, if a color doesn't look well on you, it, it doesn't, it's not doing you any favors for your face or your, you know, your, when, when a color is right for you, it illuminates your entire being, right? Yeah. So colors, sparks joy and fit. Those would be my biggest three fashion tips. Yes, absolutely. No, I totally agree with those. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm checking some things off. I'm like, all right, I need to go through my closet again. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, I've been having so much fun with this conversation. Oh, <laughs> but we're going to get into the rapid fire questions if you're ready for them. Oh, okay. Rapid fire. <laughs> all this, right. is the, this is a lightning round. Okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to expand on them, you can. Um, I, I got to change the name, but I just like the name. <laughs> So the first question is, who is your hero? Oh, gosh, my mom and dad. Mm. They really are. They really are. They have been a tremendous um, support for me throughout my whole life. And I could cry thinking about it. I wasn't always the easiest kid. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely gave them a run for their money. But they have shown me so much unconditional love. Um, and they have shown me that anything is possible, you know, they're immigrant people. So they came to this country from Italy with nothing, not knowing the language. Um, and they've totally made it and just from the ground up. So 
yeah, they've shown me a work ethic and they've shown me about love and they've shown me about anything is possible. And it's, yeah, without question, it's them. <laughs> <laughs> they sound like an incredible pair. <laughs> they are. They are. Oh, gotta love them. And they're very stylish. So that's where I, I believe that. it. Well, that's yeah. where your dad started, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. Oh, I love it. Um, so what motivates you to work smarter? What motivates me to work smarter? Um, I love my family, so I do everything I do for them. Um, it's, you know, it, my kids are my life. So I just, you know, it, it, I, I make sure that I'm, you know, working, but I also, you know, make sure that I take time away. And it's hard for me because now like everything is so connected, right? You're on your phone. You can, you know, somebody sends me a text message. My first instinct is to pick up the phone and look at it right away, you know, but then, you know, there's no fashion emergencies. So, you know what, the, that can wait till tomorrow, you know? Yeah. So it, it's my kids, my kids, my family. I, I do everything that I do for them. So yeah, I just, I, I work the hours that I work and then I take time. I take time to just you know, play. Yes. <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure your kids appreciate it. No. Even if they haven't the said it, <laughs> I'm sure they I know. <laughs> you know what? Oh God. We're like in a very trying, we're at very trying ages right now. So it's like, you know, the tween teens are really fun. <laughs> yeah. I believe it. <laughs> I'm not a mom, but I've worked with a lot of teens. <laughs> They're definitely interesting. Great. They are. They're an interesting bunch. They really are. <laughs> I could have a whole other conversation about that. I, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were a superhero, what would be your power powers? If I was a superhero, what would be my powers? Oh, I would love to know what people are thinking. Uh. Like all the time. <laughs> So I just, I, I do that sometimes, you know, I like look at people, I'm like, geez, I wonder what they're thinking right now, you know? Yeah. So I think that would be my answer. I would want to know what they were thinking. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you might get a little more than you bargained for. <laughs> Listen, I have seen it all. I have heard it all. I work with women. I mean, and I have kids. So there is nothing that you can say or do that shocks me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Um, so if you were to share a meal with any four individuals, living or dead, who would they be? Okay. So, oh gosh. Um, Snoop Dogg. Hmm. <laughs> I, like I love it. I love them. Um, Gandhi. Ah. Um, Oprah. I mean, Oprah. Like, Oprah. Oprah, girl, where are you? Right? <laughs> Um, Oprah, mm -hmm. how many is that? Snoop Dogg, Oprah, Gandhi, mm -hmm. um, Betsy Johnson. She's like one of my favorite designers. I would love to see her. Um, that's four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone else you want to add in there? No. No. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Good. That would be a fun meal. Not gonna yeah, lie. right? <laughs> it's like a very motley crew. I would love it. I think so. <laughs> What is the most daring thing you've ever done? The most daring thing I've ever done. Girl, got married and had kids. <laughs> That's I, I very daring. <laughs> That's the most daring thing I've ever done because you just don't know, right? You go into it and you think it's going to be one way and it may not be. And so, yeah, so far, so far we're good. But... <laughs> That's, that's Good. pretty daring in my mind. That's pretty it, daring in my mind. It is daring. You never know what's going to unfold. Yeah. It's a risk. It's a risk. That's right. It seems like that's right. Out. Yeah, it is. Uh, what is the phone app that you use the most? The phone app by Instagram. <laughs> Done. Always. <laughs> that's like a, that's like a, that's like a no brainer for me. I didn't even have to think about that one. Yeah. Instagram is definitely it for me. Yeah. I wish it did. I, you know, I contemplated taking it off my phone to be honest mm -hmm. with you, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I get sucked in cause it's like, there's so much stuff <laughs> and you know, day. I, yeah. And I have, you know, I, 
I have my, um, I feel like I've curated a pretty good like feed for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so nice. It's like actually refreshing. It's like not toxic at all. It doesn't feel toxic at all. You know, um, I just, you know, I, I, I follow accounts that are inspiring and that, you know, inspire me to be a better human. So, you know, and it's so, yeah. So it just, it's a, it's a feel good app for me. It really is. I think that's important to remember too. Like some people will say certain things about Instagram, but it, you're right. It is about curating your own feed of like who you want to follow, who you want to be in the presence of, because that affects your mood too, when you see things. Totally. And you know, I mean, do I think that, you know, I have very strong opinions and very strong feelings about social media and children. Um, But, you know, I think that when you're an adult, it's different because, you know, yes, you can see things that you don't want to see and you do get the imposter syndrome and you do get the comparison thing, but you also have a, you know, a a stronger ability to, you know, filter those things, you know? And so, you know, and I think once you get older and you just, you're, you're more secure in yourself. So, you know, it doesn't, it it affects you just, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't affect you as much or just affects you differently or, you know, you become, you know, aloof to it. I I don't know, Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've never had any, anything bad to say about, about that, that app. So. Well, that's good. (laughs) And what is the last book that you've read? Oh, girl. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I told you this one. So, uh, um, so I don't read, which is crazy. I know, but I read like industry stuff mm-hmm. a lot. Like I'm, my face is in women's wear daily, daily. Um, and I read, you know, I read fashion magazines and I read stuff like that, but I don't read books. So 50 shades of gray when it first came out, was like the first book, that was the last book I read. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, you read other things. It doesn't have to be a book. I do. I do. Read. It just yes, I do. I do. Yes. I read, I read a lot. And, you know, I read a lot about, you know, like I said, industry. I'm I'm always reading about the industry. Always, there is nothing that I haven't read about the industry. Um, so yes, so yeah, but books, eh, not so much. <laughs> it's all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you were to have a movie about your life thus far, who would play you? Um, Mila Kunis. Mm. I have a girl crush on her. Can I say that on? Can I say that on TV? Of course you can. <laughs> we welcome. Yes, all. I love her. I love Mila Kunis. I think she's. I you know I love the movie Bad Moms, um, oh, yeah. because it was just so relatable. And so I and I thought that she, and I think that she's just. I don't know. I think that she's cool and she's edgy and she's beautiful and she's all the things. So, yeah, her. <laughs> well, she actually, I just saw an article this morning that she um, was the top like 100 most influential people in the oh, world. Oh, really? I, I don't know if it was in the world or in the country. I think it was the world because of everything. For she's what? Doing. What's she doing that's so influential? With Ukraine, um, they raised like over tens of millions of dollars for the like refugees and everything else that's going on. Oh, good for it. See, one more reason. So, and she's amazing. Kind <laughs> hearted. So that's yes. one more reason to love her. Exactly. She's amazing. Yes, I don't know her personally, is. but I think she's amazing. <laughs> well, maybe we should invite her over for dinner. What do you think? Perfect. <laughs> we can add her to the list. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so what is your favorite family recipe, whether it's traditional or just what you like to make as a family? Like the four of us together? Yeah. Oh. Or even your extended family too. Oh, well, so... My family, they're really good eaters. They're not so great cooking wise. Um, so, but my daughter, actually, she loves to cook. So she and I actually cook often. Um, my mom, and so she and my mom made homemade pasta when we were in Florida last, which was really nice. And so, um, and then, you know, my mother-in-law made bread with her, um, you know, most recently. So, you know, it's nice. Um, you know, we love, pa- we love pasta in this house. <laughs> um, so homemade pasta is a good one. Pizza. Yeah. My kids love to make pizza. Um, mm-hmm. we're a big pasta and meatballs people. 
on Sundays we're big sauce people. Um, so that's like, you know, the meatballs are like important, very important. So, um, that's right. That's right. So, um, so yeah, meatballs, it's, you know, it's the, it's the ingredients that go into the meatballs that make them so yummy. So, um, yeah, they, they, you know, my daughter gets in there with her hands and it's like very sensory. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like a great time too. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So if you were to describe yourself as an animal personality style type, what animal would you be? Oh, girl, I'm a leopard. <laughs> I, oh, I love um, that. <laughs> I'm a feline all the way. Um, so I'm a Leo. That's my zodiac. Ah, sign. Me too. <laughs> you are? Oh my yeah. gosh, when's your birthday? August 15th. When's yours? Okay, so I'm July 25th. So I'm like, oh, okay. so I'm I'm at the end of, of mm -hmm. cancer. Um, but oh my gosh, that's so funny. I didn't know that. No wonder why you're so amazing. <laughs> Likewise. So, Likewise. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm a feline all the way. Mm -hmm. All the way. Leopard is my, it's like my spirit animal. Lions, any, any female, any female feline is 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 all me i can see it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so if you're having a rough day what is something that instantly makes your day better shopping always makes sense. always shopping <laughs> love it it's not called retail therapy for nothing right <laughs> exactly <laughs> um fashion just is it just in, it instantly brightens my day and lifts my mood and it's just i love it i really do um, yeah, I, I, yeah. if, yeah, fashion without a, shopping, without, a, without question. You love yeah. what you do. <laughs> I do. I do. I love it so much. I do. I do. So if you do have a day off and you aren't shopping, what is your favorite way to spend your day off? Like from clients and everything. Um, I enjoy working out. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoy a good, like spa facial. I enjoy, um, what else do I enjoy? Um, you know, I, I just enjoy like silence. Like I would love, I just love to sit with a cup of coffee, especially this time of year where it's like, you know, I live in, we live, I live in Boston. So summer is like two seconds long. Um, literally two seconds long. So, you know, it's like, I love when my husband puts out the patio furniture and like, I just sit out there with a cup of coffee and I just like sit in silence alone with my thoughts. Like that is like the biggest form of self-care for me. Um, yeah. I mean, even, even I'll, I'll go and I'll put on like my full face of makeup, even sitting outside just on my deck. And like, that's what I do. I just I sit there with a cup of coffee and it's great. Oh, it sounds so relaxing. I, <laughs> it is. It's great. <laughs> and I have one final question with the rapid fire questions is okay. what is something an outsider wouldn't know about your industry? Mm, it's dirty. Yeah. It, it's dirty. Um, it's like such a competitive industry. It's crazy. I, you know, I don't, I mean, even, yeah, even within like, you know, people, even, even the allies get dirty, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone thinks like, oh, fashion, it's so fun. And it is so fun, but there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of felines. <laughs> Well, good thing you're a feline, so <laughs> you can combat anything. <laughs> There's a lot of felines. Um, yeah, it's 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 dirty. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart at all. I mean, if you really want to make it, you have to really g get in there, and you can't have a you can't have a thin skin. That's for sure. Um, you need a you need a good shield of armor to be in the fashion world. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Christina, I have one final question for you okay. before I let you go. Where okay. can people find you, hire you? I'm going to link everything below in the comment section, but um, please let us know where we can find you. Okay. So I'm on Instagram. My handle is empower the sass, all one word. Um, Facebook, same thing. Um, empower the sass, three separate words. Um, what else do you want? Those are my two main social handle, social channels. Um, 
my website is empowerthesass.com. I don't know. What else do you want to know? My email? I don't know. You can find me. You can connect with me in any one of those three ways. Perfect. Well, we'll definitely have everything linked. If we missed anything, it will be below. Um, but thank you so much, Christina, for taking the time today to just share all you can about fashion and just the world that you're in. But we so appreciate your time today. So thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. It was so great to be here and see you in person. And it was fantastic. Super humbled. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And make sure to like, subscribe, comment below. What was the biggest takeaway from Christina today? And we'll see you on the next video.